Hello and welcome to this Call the Shots Director's Cut with Warren King. Hello Warren, how are you doing? Hi, hi Mike, I'm fine, thanks you. Yes, good, excellent. Um, you and I know each other quite well now, but for the benefit of the uh, viewers, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what it is you do? Um, yeah, I'm a, um, a professional photographer. I do corporate and commercial work. I've been based in the Royal Borough of Greenwich for oh, over 20 years, um, but obviously I work in different areas. I live in uh, the Bromley area, so I so operate quite a lot around Bromley. Um, London, home counties, wherever need, I'm needed. <laughs> Uh, travel to and I do a selection of work um, mostly working with people either do you know uh, headshots portraits um, I cover events corporate otherwise and um, um, I've got a studio down Woolwich so I can photograph um, products uh, still lives as well. How long have you been in the photography game? Uh, I left college 1990 did a bit of traveling and bits of other pieces but properly I suppose as a business for uh, just over 21 years. Wow. I mean, I don't need to tell you what level of schooling I was at in 1990, but you must have obviously been and seen it all in the photography game and certainly the development. Well, I should say there, was, there wasn't any Photoshop that I remember. Uh, there was a thing called a Quantum paint box, Quantel paint box we were introduced to, which was this £100,000 massive machine <laughs> that made you could join two photographs together, which was like sci-fi at the time. Um, yeah. But mostly, yeah, it was in a dark room, you know. Um, with a, you know, a fixer and a developer and all that sort of stuff. Um, Have you done any analog photography recently? Not for a long time. I did, I did put some film on a camera a few years ago um, and it stayed in there for about two years and then I got it developed. <laughs> and I uh, put some more film in there and uh, that's been in there a couple of years again now. Um, so it's like a time it, capsule. It, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> like the doomsday book. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I can't, I would, I would say, you know, there, there's something quite special about um, using film and going into a dark room and developing it. So, you know, I'm coming out and a, and a print coming out, it's quite magical. Uh, but I suppose, you know, just don't really have the time um, to do that as a professional. It's, uh, it's um, I suppose, to preserve a more sort of fine art now these days. Although I do hear wedding photographers still, some still use film and some do for art projects, obviously. But um, yeah, yeah, I, guess it becomes, I guess it becomes an artistic choice now. Rather than yeah. you know the only way to actually well, do it. people do like people do like the archival quality of film. Um, you know, obviously hard drives can break down, and you can you know, and memory cards etc. Et but mm -hmm. uh, but then also you can open the back of a camera and expose your film by mistake. So there's always, there's always pitfalls in every, every um, yeah, or the uh, forgetting to wind it on that old classic. <laughs> that, that happens. I promise you, that's I've shot a whole roll of film with no film in it. <laughs> Oh gosh! Yeah, people thought that was quite unbelievable. But I, I, I spoke to every photographer I know, and they'd all done it. So yeah. there you go. So now the model equivalent is, you know, getting all the way there and realizing you haven't bought your memory card. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Never mind. Um, obviously, you've been, you know, say you've been involved for a long, long time. You've done many different kinds of shoots, many different kinds of uh, occasions. But what are the what is what's the thing that gives you the most pride from your work? Um, I, I like being I'm given um, the reign to be creative. Um, you know, that can happen uh, uh, um, in, in, in a commercial sort of sense. Sometimes I've given a brief. Um, I work for a couple of agencies up north and I'm sort of their man in the south. So they send me this brief and I think one I had was, sort of to, to, you know, the, the theme of the tw 24 program. Oh, wow. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, was the, yeah, that was the sort of the way they wanted to storyboard it. And, and then they sent me down to a warehouse just that side of Heathrow. Um, with forklifts and uh, you know and, and pictures of, of offices, so you have to sort of be quite imaginative. And I think that your creativity comes out of um, you know uh, sort of years of experience and and, and um, working to a brief, but you know um, sort of fulfilling it and using your own creativity to do that out of some some very sort of mundane situations, I suppose. Mm. Um, and I do get the chance to let loose. I did um, a shoot for a hair salon recently, which was really good. Um, they, you know, had a stylist and we had a whole crew, um, we went into the studio um, and made some really good, you know, lovely images. And um, yeah, it was great. And I'd like to do, you know, a bit more. And I'm not probably known so much for that, but that, that, that sort of thing I like. Um, so that's, you know, creating a whole set, you know, lighting and working with makeup and stylists and, uh, and all that sort of thing. And it was, so yeah, we got some great results. It was for the hairdresser of the year. Oh, wow. And 
yeah, uh, unfortunately, the stylist didn't quite make it. Made it through to the, to the second round, but uh, didn't quite make the, the whole thing. But uh, yeah, very, very happy with the images. Amazing. How often do you work with people who are less than keen to have their picture taken? <laughs> well, um, I do, yeah, I do a lot of corporate headshots. Um, and that's sort of one of the, you know, the main uh, staples of what I do. And obviously, at least 50% of the people don't want, you know, if they've been sent by the company or... I'm not very good in front of a camera, you know, it's one of those ones you as video videographer would have heard of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Absolutely. Yeah. If I had a penny every time someone said that. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so yeah, it, you know, it takes uh, as well as the camera craft and knowing what you're doing with lighting and, and, and using your equipment, um, it, it comes down to having a you know, sort of a personality where you can put people at ease and have the experience to be able to do that as well. Um, yeah. put people at ease and, and, and to make sure you know sort of reassure them it's not the dentist they're going to but just just have the photograph done <laughs> so yeah certainly the moment times we encounter people who ordinarily wouldn't choose to be in front of the camera and there's a lot to be taken from when you present them with an edit and they go oh oh I, I didn't realize I was actually that good or, oh I, I didn't realize I sounded I sounded so together and everything there you go. Yeah, you did. You think you'd be surprised. You have to forgo yourself a bit of the credit in that respect. But I imagine it's similar when you can show somebody who wasn't really enamored with the idea of having their picture taken to present yeah. with the images then afterwards. That must be very nice. Well, a lot of the time when I when I do, uh, I mean, I set up headshot days where people can, you know, I can have a sort of a... Um, uh, you know, a whole day of people coming in, and that be a company or individuals, and they come in. And what I like to do is tether the images to a laptop, and that gives them, you know, a certain amount of confidence because they can see, apart from just you know, a small square on the back of the camera, they can see their images quite large, and they can see what I'm doing with the lighting. I mean, you know, I get them into sort of strange positions, which they think is strange, and then I can show them on screen. Mm. And, oh, this is what I'm getting to do. It makes you, you know, it makes the chin look good. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're slightly angled. It makes it makes everything look much, much, much better. Um, so that, yeah, that's an advantage being able to do that and, and, and show people. And often they, they'll come and have a look after every, you know, we've shot a few test shots, and then they'll go back and then they feel a little more confident that um, they're going to look, you know, they're going to look look great. Um, you know, I, I, try, I, I use that that yoga advert, which I quite like their strap line. It's you on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? I guess we, uh, when you can head up, have the camera connected to the computer, you can have all the filters and the presets set up. So then when they see the image come through, it's kind of, yeah, like, you know, a long way yeah, to get the image article. It works. Yeah, it works. Well, I mean, obviously that doesn't work on events, but if you're, if you're set up in a room, set up on a tripod and you're just, you know, um, you're doing a bit of sort of, you know, in, in some ways it's all a little bit of a production line. I, I've shot 40 people in a day sometimes, you know, from going into a company. Uh, it can slow things down, but then you shot a shoot a little less and a little more considered and, and not, you know, I mean, don't too many, too many outtakes because, say, people can come around and have a look, they go back and they go, oh, okay, I'm going to do a few more. And it's inevitably, it's the last one or two that are the ones that they go, oh, yeah, that's the one I like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're often going through takes of interviews and, and recordings and start at the end because the end versions are always inevitably the best ones where they're a lot more comfortable they've relaxed into it they're mm. you know they're familiar more with what they're going to say and hopefully yeah we've made it comfortable enough for them to start having fun with it and the difference uh, a smile makes when mm. people are talking on camera but i imagine some people again are conscious of how they look when they smile and can you get a natural reaction from them and kind of capture that in the moment yeah, I mean, as I say, some people, it's, it's funny because you do get sort of people who, 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 you know, you'll get in a position and you'll get a certain look and then they just won't move. And it's almost like they're frozen. So every every frame looks the same. So you're trying to get something a little bit different each time. Mm. And then other people go from wildly hysterical to, <laughs> you know, very, very stern. Yeah, um, face. And I might, I, you know, as I say, with a bit of experience, you can get the. I mean, the last thing you, you know, really want to do is if sort of say, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you're going to go say smile, but you don't really want to do that. It's a bit of a cliche and you want them to do it, but you don't, that's the last thing you're ever going to use to, to get them to that state so often i'll find that if i do get them to laugh a little bit um that it's somewhere between the you know the head rolled back you know and whatever and then back to this you know somewhere in between and it's and often it's the smile in the eyes rather than the in the, in the, the mouth yeah. it's a little sparkle in the eyes you're looking for and a little twinkle definitely yeah um, it's, you can always tell the fake smiles from the forced ones uh the yeah. real smiles from the forced ones yeah it is it's the eyes and the ears going up as well when you know you're really 
uh, you've really connected with someone like, okay, yeah, there it is. There it is. Um, in the age of, you know, personal branding and personal image and where we're all presenting ourselves, you know, on social media and the like, um, photography, I mean, do you have any tips for people who would come to you for advice with photography or, or, or how to present themselves? Yeah, I mean, um, they, a lot of people are tempted to sort of do their own, certainly for social media, LinkedIn. You know, I mean, I, 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 I would say, whew, I don't know, something like at least 50, 60 percent, like 70, 70 percent or so pictures that just not really doing anybody any favours. They're a selfie. They're 10 years old. They're, they're a, you know, they're, they're holding a cocktail. They're on holiday. They're whatever, you know, as an example. And is that the professional look you want to go for? You know, um, they might be in the corner of the office up against with a plant sticking out of the head. You know, I've, I've seen them all, uh, bad lighting, and they and they, they just don't do any you know any favors. So I would you know would say um, yeah, you, you can get a, a, if you know what you're doing with a bit of lighting and framing and whatever. But um, I would say to people, you know, just invest in, in, in professional photography. Um, you you can give it a go, but um, I mean, in times like these, yeah, you might want to sort of improve what you've got and try it in your living room with a plain background or whatever. And I'm thinking of ways I can help people out in the you know in the meantime. But um, yeah, I think you know you're thinking about if you're if you want a, a premium uh, brand and, and you want to show your business at its best, it's best to use a professional photography, video, graphic design. It's you know as, as we know, you can go and do bits and pieces yourself and maybe when you're starting out but um you know just to give a, a, bit, a more of a professional polished image i think it's worth you know investing in um and and and, and 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 you know the thing is you can get a good headshot um for the price of a haircut and it'll last a bit longer <laughs> even though haircuts are hard to come by these days i'm exactly. trying to hold i don't have that problem myself this is why my head's my, my head's sticking out of the top of the screen because the, the my barnet is um Nearly reaching the ceiling at the moment. <laughs> less, than, less than presentable, perhaps. Well, it is interesting, isn't it? I mean, we've all got devices in our pockets that can take amazing quality images, but yeah. there's still some basic principles you have to follow: framing, rule of thirds, lighting. You know, the the different angles and and the, the dip, how close you are to it can all have an effect on these things. You must, yeah, you must spend your life kind of going through social media and. Yeah, yeah, wanting to offer advice at least, which is obviously the best. Yeah, advice. I mean, um, what you got to also remember is uh, some of these cameras, you're going to stick them up to your face and do a selfie. They're going to start distort your features. Yeah. I had one guy who had this picture of him, um, and I used it as a LinkedIn as a comparison because he had one there. His skin looks sort of orange yellow. His face was really sort of stretched out, and he had this sort of look of horror on his face, you know. And then, and then I managed to get him in the studio, and we did a really nice one, well lit. And it was such a difference, you know. The comparison was just unbelievable. A lot of people commented on it because mm. um, I put them, as I say, so I said, "Can I use your old one?" <laughs> and put them side by side, and it was just a stunning um, sort of comparison to you know to make. Um, Absolutely. Now, I think, you know, when it, and it just reminded me one of the first things I had some business advice quite early on when I started as a professional. And it was like, oh, what do you think about these new digital cameras? And I said, well, you know, <laughs> are they going to put me out? Are they going to put you out of business? I think was the question. I said, well, look, you know, yeah, okay. They, they've got autofocus, auto exposure, they did blah, blah, blah. But they don't have a little aerial that comes out the top and shows you which way to point it. <laughs> it was very true. Yeah. Response. And that's still the same. You know, I had, again, somebody the other day was, oh, um, do, does anybody know somebody could do a headshot photograph? And somebody responded, why don't you just do it on your phone? You know. And I said, yeah, phones have incredible um, resolution, but yeah. you know, and you've still got to have some good lights in frame it, have a good angle, expression, it, you know, all that yeah. goes with it. So the question wasn't who has a camera, it's who can take a photograph. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're good because they're with you all the time. If you're doing an, I don't know, if you're doing a news story, then okay, that, that, that's pretty, pretty good to have that and you can capture something. But I'm sure it must drive you mad because the amount of um, video you see, in portrait mode <laughs> and even on telly oh, and you go oh why didn't you just turn it sideways <laughs> the, the amount of times you see even on social media of people filming the television in portrait mode it's like look at the shape <laughs> of your television you're seeing the central uh, third of it why wouldn't yeah. you just think oh well if i turn my phone that way then i can film all of the television yeah yeah that that is my yeah vertical video is it's a, it's a scourge on humanity i understand that certain platforms it makes sense instagram stories for instance because yeah. 
you get that experience. But th I don't think there's ever an excuse for vertical video. It drives me absolutely no. bananas. You, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but like you say, right, I mean, yeah, it's one thing to have a camera. It's a whole other set of skills and knowledge to know how to use it properly and to get the best results. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're you seeing it again at the, at the moment. There's another great example with Zoom, um, you know, or, or online meetings. Um, and, you know, people are sort of sitting down here. Oh, or yeah. Here. Or they've got this the light, you know, right behind them, sort of bleeding around. In the and, backlit, yeah. And they're sort of sitting in silhouette with this sort of flare coming through. And to me, you know, I'm sitting there going, right, I just want to align myself, get myself a good bit of real estate space to my head <laughs> so yeah. people can see me. Is that, I'm not looking at my nostrils. <laughs> in the interest of full disclosure, I mean, my lighting isn't great here. I've got the window to my left and I've got a little selfie room without the light. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, even just teaching people basic lighting. Yeah. That's without the light there. It, it's, you know, it's crazy. Put it back on. Yeah. A little bit better. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I was telling somebody the other day, you can even get a piece of paper. So sort of by the side, I mean, I've got the same as you, but the side lighting, but we've yeah. got a very wide room, so it's sort of spreading around, but even just doing... Yeah, a bit of, of reflection, yeah. yeah. World of difference, all fun, yeah. all fun and games. I also understand that there's an app that you've uh, been turning people onto recently to help them with their self-photography. Yeah, another photographer told me about this a little while ago, um, and it's called photofeeler.com, and you can uh, upload your personal profile picture, headshot. And uh, there's a business and a social element uh, to it. So you, if you choose the business one, if you use it obviously it's on something like LinkedIn, and, and it gives you um, the opportunity to vote on other people's pictures, which you then can build some credit up, and then people will vote on yours. I think you can pay for it if you want to, but the best way to do it, vote on other people's, get yourself a bit of credit, and you, then you get voted on. Uh, in the business section, I'm just checking actually, but here, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, you can vote uh, sort of um, from not at all to very, and um, you got score for competence, uh, likability, and, and influ how influential you look. So okay. it's a great one to put in. I, I put mine in, and I'm getting, thankfully getting quite a high score. <laughs> that is the pictures you've taken of other people or your, your selfies? No, 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 you know, my picture. I, I, I did my own headshot by, and there's me saying, don't do your own headshot, but you know, I had all the lighting set up. It took me a few goes on the timer uh, to yeah. get, actually get in focus. <laughs> but uh, I, I did one yeah. a while ago, probably needs updating. It's a couple of years old now. And my hair is obviously a lot longer at the moment, so I need an update. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I shot that in the studio. It was all set up, lit for um, uh, some headshots. So I just jumped in and did one myself. So anyway, I uploaded it. And um, it's the one I've got on my, if anyone wants to look at my LinkedIn, they'll, they'll see it on there. <laughs> okay, excellent. I've... Um... But, I, I've picked the worst time ever to renew my passport. <laughs> Not only, of course, is it now almost worthless given that we're out of the EU, um, but also, yeah, try and take my own picture. And it's and it, the app, the, the website tells you if your picture's any good or not. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, re I mean, just the difference in lighting uh, I've noticed taking your own pictures is insane. There, there mm -hmm. are some that also have just crawled out of a grave and others look perfectly normal. And in the end, my flatmate is a photographer. Uh, and we went down into the hallway and the diffused light through the front door against the yeah. white door in between. Oh, absolutely magical. Um, but yeah, there can be certain pitfalls. So yeah, if there's uh, that particular tool, we'll put the link in the description. Um, yeah, it's very yeah, good. It's, it's, it's a good test, you know, to, as I say, you know, to uh, you get your peers, for them to look at you and see what, uh, and, it, and, it, and it is, you know, and again, I would go through them and probably find, 60% not that great, you know, to be honest. So it's, uh, it always fills me with horror, but optimism. <laughs> it's like, you know, people have got some terrible pictures, but hopefully that's some work for me, you know, in the future, <laughs> or Absolutely. photographers in general. <laughs> well, it's been fun to find out these little tips, you know. Um, I know at some point I've, you know, as someone who's, who's made a career behind a camera and how hard it can be to kind of give up that self preservation and, and get in front of the lens. So I fully appreciate the difficulty you face with people like me. Um, obviously, going and taking pictures as we record this isn't quite possible for you. But mm. further ahead down the line, or indeed right now, how is it that people can support you and your business? Well, um, I, I have sort of put it out there, although predominantly I work with people. Um, I do have a studio space um, that is self-isolating in Woolwich. So I'm actually saying... Um, if people are doing e-commerce uh, or they've got any products, I can actually photograph that if they can get them to me or I pick them up. So that that's one thing I've sort of 
putting out there because I'm not like, probably a, as known, well known for doing that. But um, you know, I mean, I'm in, a, I'm in a, um, a community of artists. We've got sort of 500 studios, 600 artists, craft makers, designers uh, on our site, uh, and quite often I photograph people's work down there, whether that be canvases, paintings, drawings, um, furniture. You know, uh, we've got a few um, furniture makers join us. Yeah, leather goods. Yeah, I've got done a few. We've got a few people down there make leather goods. So I've um, uh, photographed that sort of thing. And even just um, things like people make, you know, scented candles. Four candles. I do four candles as well. <laughs> I don't know if you read on that movie the other day. Oh, hand, handles for forks, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 that was mentioned. The, the, the girl who mentioned it was quite befuddled. I think she was a, not quite as uh, old. To remember There's that. a certain demographic, yeah, where that lands completely and otherwise it, 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 it's over your head. I guess you wouldn't necessarily think of that, yeah, as product photography being something which uh, someone who normally photographed people as being possible. But yeah, as mm. more and more people turn perhaps to online to earn their secondary income or to, you know, get involved in the world of Amazon and eBay selling, it's, for, again, yeah, it's so to um, make all the difference. Yeah, I just saw some, I got an email from somebody who does SEO and he said that uh, there was an article about Google shopping going for free now. So you can actually... Mm. If you're, you know, making or producing or selling goods, you can do that for free. I think it's starting in the US and it's been rolling out worldwide so soon. But um, I thought, oh, okay, well, that's, you know, people are going to be doing that wherever they're, well, so it's still going to need to be photographed. Um, yeah, and apart from that, um, I think that, you know, that's the only area of photography, I think, at the moment where I could, could do it. As I say, apart from a few tips on how to look good in front of a camera, whether an online meeting or... I mean, interestingly, there's a, there was an article the other day about a guy doing um, a photographer. He's doing portraits through mm -hmm. FaceTime. Oh wow! And, yeah, so, so you, obviously you need an iPhone. He's he's using a, a MacBook, so he's getting them to set their camera up uh, on their on their iPhone, uh, and then he's move maneuvering them, and then he's hitting a, a, a screen, screen grab, capture, so. yeah. Catch, capturing what he's got there and then editing a bit and, uh, and he's coming out with some interesting results so you know I'm, I was looking inside the other day and thinking oh, well you know maybe I could adapt that to you know sort of doing some makeshift yeah you know profile headshot pictures <laughs> for absolutely people. for the interim period yeah yeah so watch well, your space <laughs> we'll be certain to share all your social media links as well uh, in the comments to the video I know you're very a big fan of LinkedIn um, obviously no judgment of anyone's pictures as and when uh, if they choose to befriend you on any of the social medias, uh, but we'll definitely make sure people can find out how to find out more about you. Um, yeah. In the meantime, Warren, it's been an absolute pleasure to catching up with you. I'm sure you and I will cross paths again very soon. Yeah. As, as, as virtually yeah. or otherwise. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you so much indeed for joining us uh, for this chat. No, you're welcome. It's been, it's been fun. <laughs> Likewise. Cheers.